I'm gonna guess that we're live right now. Uh, I'm I'm gonna assume that we're live. Did we hit the live button? I don't know. We actually did. We yes. are here. Oh, that's sorry. We, we are, are here, there, ladies are and gentlemen. <laughs> Yeah, first of all, th uh, shout out to Anime Impulse for the wonderful preview video so that you guys could all get seated and get ready for what is tonight. Folks, it's Tuesday, 7.30 p.m. Pacific Daylight Time. You're watching Relentless Weeps, the show where we do nothing but talk anime, the anime community, and everything related. It's here where you learn about the Kawaii philosophy. We're your hosts, Shelby McWeeb and Andrew J. Alandi. Shelby, how are we doing tonight? We're doing really well, and I got to relive how much fun I had at M.A. Impulse this past year. So really? That video. Yeah, that was all of those clips are really cool. Re okay, yeah, so if you guys were in there early again, that was the huge recap. Again, Anime Impulse, thank you guys so much for hosting us here. It's just been a wonderful treat. We're, uh, we're on location. And Shelby, I understand we have an excellent Excellent guest for this evening. Is that right? We do. We have Riley Rose from Anime Crimes Division. If you want to introduce yourself, you probably Hi, know I'm yourself. Riley Rose Critchlow from Anime Crimes Division. Ah, uh, yes. So, again, folks, Riley Rose Critchlow from Anime Crimes Division. If you hadn't heard it the uh, million times we just repeated it now. <laughs> she folks. did a better job, though. I think out of the three of us, she did the best in <laughs> She would do the best, man. Dude, easy. Uh, so, folks, make sure if you are in the chat, again, share it out. Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, even MySpace and Zonga, because I'm pretty sure MySpace <laughs> needs some new uh, material. New content, yeah. yeah. Because they deleted everything. I know. Oh, R.I.P. All those memories. Right. Uh, all the all the wonderful I feel layouts. Bad. I wanted to like. I don't. I don't want to go back and look. But like, no I feel one bad. wants to go back. And look. <laughs> I, feel bad I, that I it's did. Fun. I did actually. You did. Half Are you my okay? Surprisingly, yes. I was like, this was a past time in my life. It was like it was Mar it was it was the MySpace era and then the Facebook era and now the Facebook era is still going. So, mm -hmm. uh, by the way, folks, yeah, let us know that you are in the chat, joining in. Say hi if you have questions for Radley Rose. Please let us know. I've got eyes on the chat. What's going on today? We've got a great jam packed show for you. Giving a huge shout out by the way to Terrence Pryor. Greg Hammer says he's enjoying the video. Neil Shaper is in here. Randy Ho, Sean Chong, Umeda, Minx Midnight, Weston Diaz, as well as Rui Arena, as well Norman Locke and Cody. The Martellaire is watching as well. Again, if I butcher your name, I'm sorry, but I also don't apologize because that's just what happens. That's life. Do it you have, is. Do you have any MySpace memories that you weren't trying to look back on when oh, it got deleted? Man. I think it was just like it's all a little bit fuzzy because it was like high school and also like tainted with like <laughs> just like a lot of like personal insecurity. So it was a lot of like selfies before selfies were selfies. Yeah, uh -huh. like the bathroom mirror. Like I have to get this perfect. The like, angle. Right. Camera, or like yeah. the time running your digital camera and then like trying to, oh my like, gosh was, and like very very like filtered so you you almost have no like facial features at all Whatsoever, yeah, you never just had like good lighting in your bathroom no right no um or like you know i was like 16 so like trying to be sex i, I mean i still <laughs> cannot pull off sexy yeah. in my 30s um so, so yeah, yeah definitely, definitely not at age 16. oh yeah <laughs> a lot of my cosplay photos were taken with a timer like on my dresser mm -hmm. so mm -hmm. it just has me like turning around really fast to try and catch like the full outfit yes so that that's my 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 space memories. I also like wouldn't get a profile picture because like in two thousand eight the internet was so scary for us. like it is scary. Right. It was. It yeah. still is scary. It still is. Yeah. Don't Let's let me real. like make you forget that. It's it still is. scary. Right. <laughs> but I was like, if they have my profile picture, they're gonna kill me. But if there's a photo of me online, it's different. If that makes sense. Mm -hmm. Totally. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I mean, it makes sense in like the MySpace era. Yeah. Right. Yeah. When right. You're, like sixteen. Yeah. I also remember like reading way too into like people's. Top the top eight, friends. the top yeah. eight. Yeah, who had position one and two and eight? And it if you weren't there, right? We I were... tried to get rid of Vine and I made like my top eight, like a Sailor Moon fan account, Stephen Colbert, and like I just folded up with like weeb That's stuff. Good. That's good. And all my friends were like, "How dare you? Like you're off of mine too." So like, I lost the gambit. <laughs> oh, that backfired. was the worst choice. <laughs> no. Sailor Moon did not keep me company after that. Oh my they gosh, <laughs> that is rough. Okay, so Riley, I, I, so Anime Crimes Division, first of all, got to binge watch it a couple weeks back. It was amazing, first of all. You were excellent in it. Absolutely <laughs> fun to watch. First of all, like, how, like, so how did all this happen? Like, you getting on Anime Crimes Division. Uh, tell, tell us a story about that and, like, where it all began and what, you know. What, what it's like to like what can you tell us at least yeah oh absolutely um so i first worked with freddie and matt and mm -hmm. the rocket jump guys mm -hmm. on video game high school okay um i played domino prime who's one of the drift racers oh, nice. in seasons two and three mm -hmm. and then after that they would just sort of like hit me up occasionally i did i was in an episode of rocket jump the show on hulu and mm -hmm. the bus puncher truck flipper episode um and then i was in one of their shorts for super hot 
uh, a few years ago. Mm -hmm. And then Freddie literally just texted me in the summer of 2017 and was like, hey, what are you doing in like a few weeks? <laughs> are you around? And I was like, I mean, I think so. Like, I'm going to be out of town, you know, this week. But like, I don't mm. know what's going on. He was like, um, are you a fan of anime by any chance? <laughs> And I was like, yeah, I mean, my boyfriend's pretty into it, and I've been watching stuff that he watches, and, mm. like, I like it, but I have a lot to learn. Right. And apparently that was the perfect diesel <laughs> answer. <laughs> like, you right um, in there. Yeah. And he was like, excellent. Yeah. And so, so yeah, he sent me the scripts, and I was like, yeah, this looks like a lot of fun. Mm. And we shot the first season, which was a week-long shoot, mm. um, three episodes. And then people really liked it. Mm. So then we shot the second season this past summer mm. for two weeks for six episodes. Okay, right on. So you mentioned to us earlier that you know you're all, you're on Anime Crimes Division. We're a fan, but uh, slight call out. There's not a lot of anime that you have indeed watched, which oh, is yeah. not a problem, by the way. No, no. I mean, everybody else on set definitely had a more superior knowledge of anime okay. than I did. <laughs> no, no, that's. That's quite all right. Not necessarily everybody, actually. I think Jeff, who played the chief in this past season, knew less than, than I did. He's got wow. some pretty great outtakes in like the behind the scenes stuff. Where, okay. Where he's I don't know, he'll like deliver a line and they're like, actually you have to say it this way because like that's a title of an anime. He's oh like, really? Oh yeah. Okay. But so you're... so yeah, Jeff. No. <laughs> <laughs> Jeff is <Cold> great. Out. <laughs> but you've been eager to learn and you've been eager to catch up from yeah. what you've been telling us. What are some of the animes you've started to watch? So I guess prior to Anime Crimes Division, I had seen kind of like the Miyazaki movies that most people have seen. I had seen mm. Spirited Away and Princess Mononoke, and that might be it, maybe Nausicaa. Um, and that's basically through my boyfriend. And I had seen Avatar mm. once all the way through. I have now seen Avatar twice all the way through. Nice. <laughs> and, uh, and then like a handful of other mostly movies, I would say. Okay. But also for Anime Crimes Division, I did watch some shows and movies just because I wanted to understand right. the references or have the, you know, in season two, my character's watching My Hero Academia. So I watched right. most of the first season to sort of like understand the mindset that she would be in if that mm. was the show that she was currently watching. And yeah. um, there's one episode where we reference Grave of the Fireflies. So I watched that and it ruined my life. <laughs> oh. It'll ruin your life if you haven't seen it. It's amazing. It'll mm. ruin your life. It'll ruin your life. Fair you, warning. Yeah, that's stamped It's beautiful. By, yeah. And it will ruin your life. <laughs> huh? Okay, so there was a lot of there was a lot of uh, research you had to do. You know, as an actor, you, that's what we, you do. You look up you you look up your background information. You look up what's going to build you up. I really but, like the so. idea of method acting being like someone calls you up like I need you to do method method acting through watching anime right now. <laughs> right, like a very two thousand nine thing I've always wanted to hear. That someone's <laughs> finally ha like having to do that. Some people have to like like live with bears for six months and you sure. have to get a country roll account. I mean, right. yeah, and it's you know, I there's no way I could watch every like they reference every show and they're st still like I watch I'll like watch an old episode and be like oh my god that is a reference that I didn't even know was a reference at the time some mm. of them are sneaky like the yeah. Azamanga Dayo reference was like pretty just thrown yeah. in there <laughs> yeah um but do you would you want to ask the audience for any suggestions for anime you should watch yes I really really do so okay. as I mentioned I've seen Avatar twice and I know that there's a thing about it not technically being anime so don't at me, bro. <laughs> um, but I really connect with uh, animal friend characters. Animal okay. Any animes that have animal friends in them, anything that can fill the Appa and Momo shaped holes in my heart. Aww. Which, I mean, I can just rewatch Avatar, but, but you know. um, yes, that's that would be highly, highly uh, appreciated. There okay. was a zoo in Japan. Have you heard about this? There was actually a penguin. There was an anime that came out about like mm -hmm. zoo uh, about zoo animals like personified as like cute girls. So uh, mm. one of the zoos put up a cardboard cutout of a little of, of the penguin girl and put it in the penguin's pen. Right. And the penguin fell in love with it. This oh, is no. this is uh, this is verified. Yes. Yeah, it's very it's, it's it was like a we all we like fought for like the penguin <laughs> the penguin fell in love with it. He had his own little waifu and everything like that. That's beautiful. And mm. like. Or tragic? I mean, maybe that's terrible. When, like, that's the only way he's ever. Who has to tell? Who like someone has to tell the penguin? He's dead. I'm sorry. Oh, okay. You get a lot of it's way worse than I thought. Right, yeah. <laughs> like they died. Like they died together, basically. Oh my god. Yeah. So that's um, if any of you like are like wow. cynical after Valentine's Day has been like a month ago. Like now you can get back into feeling like hopeful about love again. If a penguin can find their soulmate before they die, and right? It's a cardboard cutout waifu. Yeah, but it's a cardboard cutout. It's fine. Whatever. Yeah. Feelings are feelings. Emotions is real it's just love man don't judge 
Wow. <laughs> R.I.P. Grape Coon. So uh, the chat's already chiming in. What for... was his name? I'm sorry. Yeah. Grape Coon. Grape Coon. Oh, yeah. Oh, grape Coon. That's yeah. right. It was. Ugh. The chat has chimed in. Let's see. Meek's Midnight I'm suggests... sorry to bring up Grape Coon to those of you who forgot. <laughs> <laughs> A lot. He took that really hard for a long time. He oh. got over it. No, be no. I never got over it. Let's be real. I'll That's never fair. get over yeah. it. Yeah. Um, Minks Midnight. You suggests, just started this journey. I'm sorry. I know. It's a, Minks yeah. Midnight suggests my neighbor is a cat. Is super cute. Based on the title, I'm already in. Okay, mm -hmm. there we go. And Norman Locks is Norman Lock is saying Sword Art Online. I didn't know there were animals in that. I, I didn't know either, but he's just suggesting anime. Great. Okay. I mean, that's a stretch. Yeah. <laughs> that's a stretch, okay. Norman, but I appreciate the enthusiasm you brought to the table. If it's just like a great show, that's fair. It's, yeah, yeah. It's, it's polarizing. I'm going to put it that way. I mean, we had the Solitaire Art Online episode, right, so I'm right. familiar peripherally. I haven't watched it, mm -hmm. but... Right. Uh, by the way, Chorus Seven uh, Seveny, I'm gonna again butcher your names because that's what happens here. Uh, is asking, will you be either at PAX East or Anime Boston? I don't think so. Oh. <laughs> Unfortunately, boom, 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 boom. you never know what might happen. Right. But yeah. not. I don't have any plans to currently. Fun fact: A great way to bring guests to conventions is tell your conventions, "Hey, we want Riley here," mm -hmm. and then they'll be like, "Hey, Riley, do you want to come?" Yeah. Like, I'm sure there's other steps involved. I don't know about, but like, I know that that's from A to B. Like, that's usually the mm -hmm. process of getting guests at places because you were guests at Crunchyroll Expo, weren't you? Mm -hmm. Right, right. Yeah. And that, I mean, as much as I would love to go to the ones you mentioned, I don't, I don't know if they just take like random solicitation. I think it's usually that they invite you. So yeah, I was invited to Crunchyroll Expo. And it was really fun. Freddie and I did a panel for the season two premiere mm -hmm. which i had hi, at the time i hadn't seen mm -hmm. so i basically got to watch the first episode with like a giant live studio audience for the first time and it was so satisfying because they were laughing at the like you're like that's a joke do they get it and then they laugh and mm. like, yes oh <laughs> nice 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 yeah it's uh, cool. the show does a really good job of like using like dry humor um, mm. And I think it's really important that you're so good at like conveying that. And I, I want to say, you. I want to say you did a really good job. <laughs> yeah, like it's really hard to yeah, pull off that. And you did a really great job. Do you Thanks. have any other like experiences with working as that character, working on set that you want to tell us about? Um, uh, no, I mean, not like as that exact char character. Obviously, I just did that for the show. Yeah. Um, mm. I've done a good amount of my own comedy, like sketch comedy stuff. Okay. I started doing in college. Um, I now have a comedy duo called Mary Kate and Ashtray. If you want to look us up, oh uh, yes, uh, which is myself and my dear friend Daniel Montgomery, who's extremely funny. Mm. Um, and so we do a lot of this our own stuff that we write, and it's uh, the 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 like tone of it isn't too different. There's a lot, you know. Of just like, especially when you're saying ridiculous dialogue or you're in a scenario that's absolutely ridiculous, like a anime crimes in general, mm. um, it's really fun to play it as seriously as possible, uh -huh. which is like, it makes it even harder because it's like so easy to, to like crack Correct. yourself yeah, up. Yeah. Um, but to play it like it's it's the most serious thing in mm. your life at yeah. that moment, it just is so much fun. So I, I really like that style. I appreciate that you did it that way. Right. Like it was really good. <laughs> hmm. um, uh, okay, good. Uh, folks, yeah, if you're just joining us right now, again, thank you for joining us here at Relentless Weebs. Your host, Shelby McWeeb, Andrew J. Landy, our guest for this evening, one of the stars of the Anime Crimes Division, which is airing on Crunchyroll. Folks, give it up for Riley Rose Critchlow. Again, folks, if you have not done so already, please share out the stream, Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, Snapchat, MySpace, and Zonga, maybe as well. I just noticed the hearts. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We're seeing all the hearts. Again, give me a quick shout out to Brianna DeCoster. That means someone right now is like very happy happy that you're here yeah. that is very yeah. true i'm so glad because we're all well i mean we should be hitting hearts because we're both happy that you're here too but the, the fans are happy that you're here you're totally oh. right brianna coster and karen Wynn and rob armadas are in the chat right now uh giving shout outs to you guys again make sure you've shared it out also giving one quick plug folks anime pasadena april 20th at the pasadena convention center visit animepasadena.com tons of guests tons of music tons of fun to be had there folks it's a great time again visit animepasadena.com i almost went into accent for that i'm not gonna lie animepasadena.com for more details or to purchase tickets 420 um, <laughs> that's had, what it is just you, in general yes. you had to bring it 420. up 420 oh my god yeah but um, by the way, uh, in terms of the looking for animals uh, mm -hmm. for anime suggestions, Corey also says My Hero Academia does have a talking uh, a talking mouse. It that, does. It's the principal. The principal. Oh. Yes. Great. Um. Yeah. Yeah. Our, uh, yeah. Yes. Okay. <laughs> One that, joke I was really happy about that you guys made was like when he was trying to pretend that he was like 
an avid like television watcher oh hmm. yeah he was like my first daughter daughter will be born like my first daughter's will be born and her name will be khaleesi mm-hmm. my cat's name is sansa which mm. was like my last like yeah she's a redhead and she's like she's very scared um but she's, <laughs> she does what she needs sansa. and that's all that's that's all that matters <laughs> she's she's had her character development both <laughs> of them um but i was watching my hero academia come out and my friend was like oh your cat's in the show and i was like what and mm. then um, apparently there's a side character who's a cop, and it's an orange cat whose name is Sansa. Oh. And I was like, this is too... What? That's, that's not a common... Like, Sansa isn't yeah. a common name at all really. for it to be, like... Hmm. Right? Don't it's you, come full circle. It's like, right? am I dead? And it's like a weird, like, lapse in reality. What was if the only that was how of. you found out that you were dead? <laughs> right? <laughs> like, Oh no! I'm renaming anime characters as real things. Like I've created my own, rea- my own reality marble. That would be that would be a weird thing oh to, to 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 happen, but also to say right now. So we're gonna move on. <laughs> if anybody else wants to comment more, um, what are other anime suggestions for Riley? Right now we're looking through the anime suggestions are not coming in too quickly. I think people are still uh, deliberating what would be the perfect mm, anime. That's fair. Don't look for the perfect anime. Look for something that would just be awesome. By the way, animals preferred. Right. I think mm-hmm. Animal Friends is like an instant sell. Mm. Like any any cute animal companions, mm-hmm. animals that t- animals in general. I mean, not like not a lot of animal death, preferably, yeah. which is my problem with Princess Mononoke, which I love, but it's also mm. like a war mm-hmm. with animals, and so there's a lot of like animal violence. So it's like hard because I believe in the cause, but it's you know still have to watch it. Okay. Um. So yes, cute Animal Friends. Right. Big bonus. So folks, yeah, if you have any uh, suggestions for Riley Rose for anime to watch yeah throw it in the chat we will throw it up there for her as well and she'll give you final judgment on whether you're right or wrong <laughs> let's be real uh let's see here norman Locke says camino friends interesting yeah that's um that's oh. the that's the dead uh i don't know why i keep on talking about death when we're supposed to talk about anim- anime animal friends but that is the name of the zoo ones that's oh. the name of the zoo an- anime okay oh. that's the dead the, penguin yeah okay. Got it. there's no dead penguin in that anime though well in my mind there is <laughs> I oh, ruined it yeah. for you. <laughs> oh no! I would suggest Azamanga Dayo because oh, okay. that has like a bunch of cat friends, a bunch of dog friends, and it's just very funny and very lighthearted. The cat. It was the second anime, anime I, ever, I ever watched. Mm. So I know there's a bitey cat in it, only, only from, from the anime crimes vision, vision reference. Yes, um, and that right, right off the, the bat, bat makes me very happy. Oh okay. yeah, <laughs> actually, you'll be very. All, all of them are bitey cats because this girl, one of the characters, really loves cats, mm. but they all bite her. Oh, yes. yes. Right? That's, that's the like thing relatable. with cats, though, is that you're always right on the brink of... And I think there was, like, a study that they did that said that, like, if cats were big enough, they would absolutely eat us. Like, they, they would love to eat their owners. They just know that they can't do it because they're too small. Right. Um, so that's always the thing with cats is it's, like, they love you, but they, like, kind of want to kill you, but, like, they want your affection, but, like, mm. only on their own terms. Yeah. So... Uh-huh. Bitey cat makes perfect sense. I'm not disappointed or surprised. Like, I've already accepted this <laughs> by, like, love. I have three cats. My roommate mm-hmm. has two. I have one. So, mm-hmm. like, I, I'm okay. Like, yeah. Okay. It makes sense if you've ever met a cat. Do you gotcha. have any cats? I don't right now. I wish I did. Um, I am very into rats. Oh, okay. Um, if you notice on my uh, social media handles, they are fo- followed by a picture of a rat. Okay. An emoji of a rat. Okay. Uh, I grew up with pet rats. They're fantastic pets. If you don't know this already, you will know now <laughs> that right. rats are the best. Or if you ever listen to my podcast, I find ways. It's like a, it's like a comedy feminist podcast, uh-huh. um, but I find ways to talk about rats most episodes it, yeah, it's like always it's like a standard right yeah yeah you're okay. they're used to it our audience like expects it now all oh, so. right it's like the the check mark <laughs> yes. okay did they talk about rats <laughs> did, we do it? did they not talk about rats what's going Something's on here? wrong <laughs> who are they have they been replaced ah but yeah i i would love to have pets now our apartment doesn't allow dogs oh, so that's a little sad but i, I gotcha. grew up with lots of animals so hence the animal friends in anime that's like where my heart mm-hmm. lies okay you actually grew up in Maine, right? I did. You grew okay. up in Maine too, right? I did. Oh, <laughs> nice. We all know each other in Maine. <laughs> Pretty much. I'm Basically. sure if we like asked around, we could find like a yes. common link. Usually people are like, you're from Maine. Oh, do you know so-and-so? And then they're like, oh, just kidding. I know it's like a huge state. And I'm like, no, no. There's a very good possibility that I know so-and-so. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. The possi- and sometimes I do. Yeah. <laughs> it's probably like two, maybe three degrees. I don't know. Yeah. Could be close. Let's see here. Uh, the tra- I like your guess. Like for, that sounds right. I don't yeah. know anything about Maine. Well, Is it I mean, real? I'm not sure. Six degrees of Kevin Bacon. I'm going. Yeah. I don't know. Yeah. There's like one or two degrees of Maine. Yeah. Gotcha. <laughs> All right. The chat has chimed in. Let's see. Minks Midnight says. Oh, this is dangerous. One Piece, because Luffy is kind of an animal when it comes to food. Okay. 
not not a bad. I don't know. There are definitely animals in One Piece. So there are enough there are. episodes and chapters of that series for there to be an animal. But if you in think it. about like the animals and their role in Avatar, like they are they're like a they're main significant. Yeah. Part. yeah, not just like oh, there's an animal, animal. like that. You know. Yeah. What I mean? So we're asking for an anime. Friends. Oh, I'm sorry, I mean to cut you off. Corey says fairy tale happy. Edward Jaha, so by the way, what's up, Jaha? Good buddy of mine from the fighting game community says Paw Patrol. I'm not sure what that's a reference to. Wait, I know what Paw Patrol is, but it's not. Is it an anime? It's like a kid's cartoon. Close I enough. I don't think it's an anime. Cl- uh, you know what? We're going to allow it. You guys, w- we need an anime where there's like a main central animal that's a friend. All right. So like it's got to be a literal animal. Okay. Daryl. Or, Sorry. you know, like yeah. a made up animal. Like a Totoro yeah. is fine with me. Totoro, is that, yeah. He's not supposed to be a real animal, I don't right? think he's a human. But like, but like not like an existing mm. in this universe. No, no. Oh, it's okay. been a long time since I rented the wrong Sonic VHS at Blockbuster <laughs> and watched Totoro. The wrong. Well, that's that's work. the only reason I watched anime in the first place was I was supposed to be oh, watching really? Sonic. Yeah, that's so funny. I rented Sonic from the from uh. It wasn't Blockbuster because we don't have Blockbuster. Video port? Oh wait, no. wait. It, it was something Portland. like okay. Video Port. Yeah. But like because we don't closed. have Blockbuster. R.I.P. Video Port. If you're from Portland, Maine. Okay. Says nobody in the comments. <laughs> oh, that's actually true. Okay, let's see. We Daryl are... Soriano giving us Nichi Jo. Oh, Nichi Jo. That's that's a good anime, regardless of animals. But yeah, Nichi Jo is a good suggestion. Okay. Thank you. And the Melissa Lay one. Just start says, writing this down. Yeah, yeah. No worries. Okay, here you go. Oh, mm-hmm. You got no, it. Okay. I so, got my notes. Yeah, uh, we're here. I'm here on the. Uh, the technologically not cool side, that's the smart side using your smartphones. Can that's you great. spell that thing you, that you just said? That is N I C H I J O U. Perfect. Nice. Okay. And, uh, oh, that's cool. Uh, actually, we got a couple more suggestions in here. Uh, Melissa says every season of uh, Precure has at least two animal esque mascots. One of them is Baby, and the other is Creature. Okay. Okay. That's not a bad suggestion. What's I'm, it called? Uh, Precure. Precure, yes. Precure. Okay. Uh, also, Shirokuma Cafe is good anime. It involves a polar bear owning a cafe. That is... Ooh, I like that. Greg Hammer. Yes. yes. Greg, hitting out of the park. Right? Um, but my main question was a transition to, did you have a hard time finding good media in mm. Maine when you were growing up? Because the internet, <laughs> like, wasn't always there. Was it That's hard to true. find media that interested you in general, not just anime? Yeah, I mean, I also grew up without a television, so that made it even harder to find oh, yeah. any media. Yeah. Um, so I'm already used to just being behind people when it comes to pop culture. So mm. even being on set, having like some anime knowledge, but being like everybody else knows more than me, that's like, that's my comfort zone. I'm like mm. very, very used to just being the person who gets like 1% of the references. Uh. There's this thing that happens with people of our generation. Um, every like, six to eight months or so you're probably familiar with this phenomenon it's like if you get enough people who grew up around the 90s together Mm. in the same room at some point they will just start naming nickelodeon shows that they've all seen (laughs) at each other and now i can participate even though i haven't seen any of them i'm like salute your shorts rocco's modern life like doug like whatever because it just happens and Mm. all one person will do it and then the rest of the people will just start naming all the other shows and i haven't seen any of those shows okay um but i don't even know why i started talking about that that's just like that happens very regularly mm. and so i've just gotten used to that sort no that's of stuff. like very adequate social commentary like good social, co- social commentary it yeah. happens yeah. um so a roundabout way of answering your question my so my mom had no tv my dad did have a tv and i think i was only allowed to watch pbs so i got, was very into wishbone <gasps> You too. I love Wishbone. It's like, so, so good. good. Uh, I was very into Wishbone. I was very into Ghost Rider. Did you? Yes. Know? Ghost Rider. Ghost Rider. I want that is like my all time favorite show of my entire life. I would like want it to be Lenny like more mm. more than mm. anything in the whole world. I think I yeah. follow Blaze Bradall on Twitter now. She's a voice actor, <laughs> okay. so nice. I know that to be true. Yeah, that was such um, a good show, regardless so of how good. many other channels you had. Mm. I had like one other you had channel, one, but it was still good. <laughs> yeah. yeah, like it was worth it. <laughs> And Survivor, so I'm still a huge Survivor. Fan. Oh, right on. Yeah, so I don't, I don't know what that says about me that I liked Ghost Rider, Wishbone, and Survivor. But yes. oh my <laughs> I god, go fund me for a Ghost Rider anime. Oh, uh, I, th- I would. It's so good, you guys. It's, it's really like kids good. who make friends with a ghost, but the, he can only communicate with them through writing. Right. So they have to like write to him and like find him in books and mm. or on computers. Yeah. It's and they solve mysteries and crimes together. It's great. <laughs> I installed LimeWire just to try and find old Ghost Rider episodes. Like, I really... That was good throwback. They might be on YouTube. I feel like I found they them maybe on they YouTube are. at some point. Yeah. yeah. But when I was, like, a teenager. Before they made it. Yeah. yeah. Mm. I got, tried to get them off LimeWire. 
Oh my God. Ugh. Yeah, let's not talk about Lime Wire. Uh, <laughs> uh, Napster. We're, we're, oh, wow. <laughs> More references. We yeah. can just say references Scour, and people are like, <laughs> like yeah, is, that, I know what that is. I know yeah. this is such great content. <laughs> mm-hmm. <laughs> that one SpongeBob episode. <laughs> yeah, basically. Mr. Krabs. We're getting um, the suggestion of The Dragon Prince on Netflix by Corey. And uh, Raquel Keys, by the way, hello to Raquel Keys, says, Aggressive Retsuko or Agretsuko is another great, I think, absolutely phenomenal. I've seen the creature. Yes, she's like a little red panda. Yeah. Who, uh, yeah, red panda. Hella relatable. Oh my gosh, extremely relatable. And uh, there's one season already on Netflix, and there's uh, there should be more coming too. So great uh, great suggestion. Also, Brianna DeCoster chiming in saying, so true with the Nickelodeon shows, naming yes. off all of that. It happens. Yes. It'll continue happening for the rest of our lives, I think. Yeah, you, can't, yeah. you can't escape. It's like, uh, dare I say... The game. It is like that. <laughs> anyway, <laughs> folks, I'm. Uh, 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 that was my evil moment of the day. Uh, folks, if you're just joining us or if you've been here again, thank you for joining us here at Relentless Weaves. Again, your hosts, Shelby McWeave, Andrew J. Landy, our guest for this evening. Give it up, Riley Rose Critchlow. Again, folks, if you haven't done so, if you look right below on the screen here, you'll see the social media tags that you can use to follow us. Do us a favor if you can. Give us a follow. It's an Instagram or a Twitter or maybe even a Facebook. Who knows? But, hey, every little bit helps. That's how you connect with your fans. You're so, smart. You'll find them. Yes. You'll figure it out. <laughs> it's, yeah, again, folks, that's on the bottom of your screen. I believe they all correspond to each of us. Or do they? So we should switch them up one day and see if anyone notices. Right? <laughs> that would be good. That would be fun. Okay, so. Um, one other suggestion would be, you've, have you seen, um, well, how, what are your feelings on Sailor Moon as a whole? So I just started watching Sailor Moon. Okay. Wow. Okay. <laughs> nice. Because that's where I am in my life. Mm-hmm. Um, I've been watching Sailor Moon and Devilman Crybaby simultaneously. So mm-hmm. my brain is a little, um, I, I, it's on all over the place. Uh, I love Sailor Moon. So far uh-huh. I'm two episodes in. Nice. Uh, also Animal Friends, positive for Animal Friends, yes. positive for uh, feminism, girl power. That's mm. all very, very uh, excellent in my, my book. Okay. Um, I'm, very, I'm enjoying it. I feel like it's something that people assume. I feel like I should have already watched it, but I like missed it somehow. Mm. I had one friend that was into it when we were little, and then she turned out to be like, a little crazy. Like a, a horse friend. So mm-hmm. I was, I was for sure a you horse, were the horse girl. Friend? Yeah, one hundred percent. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I've decided that at now in my life, it's important that I go back and watch Sailor Moon. I That's mean, fair. better late than never. And you, it's it, it's got its huge resurgence right now. So I think you're. I don't think you're late. I, I would. I'd actually say you're right on time. Yeah. So Not to perpetually bring up Maine, but this yeah. is like my only Do chance it. usually. Right. People in Maine really didn't get a chance to watch Sailor Moon because like Cartoon Network was wasn't on all the cable providers if oh that really sense, i didn't yeah. have say i didn't have because Network. it was one of my rich friends that knew about that, it, it was, that's so what, that's why i don't mean okay. to like i don't mean to no, that's this, a thing. but it was only the rich girls who watched sailor moon because it was on um mm-hmm. deke i think it was on like uh, the same channel pokemon was on for a while and then it moved to cartoon network and only the rich people who had college professor parents those are the, the only ones who <laughs> like think, sailor moon i think she legitimately had a college professor yeah. right <laughs> Like, let's, let's, this let's, might be the same person. Let's, we might just have a friend in common. <laughs> mm-hmm. Let's dissect the Maine economy right now through Sailor Moon. Yeah. But yeah, Sailor Moon was much harder to watch in Maine because there was only like VHSs at the rental store That's and that true, was it. Yeah. And if you didn't like it already, then like why or, would, yeah, yeah, it wasn't anything like I definitely didn't have the experience of like clicking through channels and being like, what's this show? Because we, you know, there yeah. were like three channels. Yeah, so. you can only rotate one, two, and three. And you knew what they were yeah. and what was on. Okay. I actually do. Do you know? Did you ever like the Powerpuff Girls when you were younger? Um, that I don't. I was aware of them, mm. and I had friends that liked them, so I have seen a couple episodes, but yeah. I did not watch it regularly. No. Okay. My mother. I liked Powerpuff Girls too much, too much to the point where like that was my horse girl. I was a mm. Powerpuff Girl girl. Uh. Um. So my mom, my mother was like, please anything please let her get over this so she bought me a ton of books and one was a sailor moon manga oh. and i transitioned it's like sorry she was like uh well i guess it's all over it's, <laughs> it's too yeah, late it's, yeah, can't escape now what um, are you gonna do cool but yeah so did you find did you end up like what was your big transition into media and like joining like the entertainment industry if that makes sense yeah i mean i wanted to become an actor ever mm. since i was like I think I was like four years old and yeah. I saw my brother in a play when he was eight. And mm. I was like, there it is. You want to do that? Yeah. <laughs> That's, That's what, what I'll be do. doing yeah. forever. Exactly. Um, so I definitely had a rare experience of like knowing for sure what I wanted to do when I was very little and then mm. just doing it for the rest of my life so far. Mm. Um, most people are not 
do not have that experience. And I st- sometimes I'm envious of like the college experience where you like go try out a bunch of yeah. majors and you're like, I don't, I'm undecided. I, I'm going to switch. That sounds yeah. great. And I think that's exactly how life should be. It's definitely, mm. it's definitely weird to know w- what you want to do and then mm. just do it forever. But that that's my life. Um, and so I grew up, I definitely grew up in like a little bit of a bubble in Maine for sure, which okay. you, you don't realize, of course, until you leave Maine and then you're like, oh, sweet, tiny Maine baby. <laughs> you didn't know. Um, so I went, I basically auditioned for anything I could possibly get my okay. hands on in Maine. They used to have auditions in the newspaper and right. I would just go to all of them. Mm. Also, because it's Maine and it's pretty safe and like your child can just go do that on their own and like that's cool. Right. Um, and then I ran out of things to do and I found on the internet like a school that had a theater mm. program and so I ended up. Uh, bringing myself to Massachusetts to audition and got into this boarding school called Walnut Hill School for the mm. performing arts. Mm. Um, and I went there for my junior and senior year of high school, which I'm very glad that I did because otherwise I would have never known about any college programs that do acting. Mm. I, I remember before I went to that school being like, yeah, I think you can major in acting in college. Like there's Juilliard does that, right? And like that's oh, all that I yeah, knew. Yeah. Um, but luckily the col- you know, the college guidance program at my second high school was very knowledgeable and they're mm. like there's NYU there's DePaul there's right, USC right. and so yeah. I ended up going to USC and then that I think obviously broadened my horizons just by like being in LA and all right. that but I also intentionally came to USC because I wanted to learn more about film and TV and get right. more into that since I had already grown up doing a lot of theater and mm. that sort of stuff okay do you do anything else on projects for, like, um, do you do any other aspects of projects, like producing and stuff like that? Yeah, I write. So I write with my comedy duo with right. Mary-Kate and Ashtray. Um, and then I end up having to do, you know, to produce and direct. I edit. I'm a freelance editor. Um, so I do all of our, like, editing stuff. I also work at a, an acting company now. So I edit all of our in-house stuff, people's okay. voiceover demos or right, demo right. reels and things like that. So you kind of, in this day and age, as an actor or any sort of creator, you end up dabbling in so many different parts of the industry right it's very like multifaceted and you kind of have to you can't just be like one track anymore can you yeah you have to be able to do multiple things sometimes all at once it's kind of weird right yeah it's cool though because it gives you a little bit more control Mm. over your career than i think you used to have right and something to do with your spare time i always recommend to actors who are just starting out like find something that you can do that's creatively fulfilling that's Mm -hmm. within your control instead of just sort of waiting for auditions like Mm -hmm. start a podcast get some friends together and make sketches like whatever it is Mm -hmm. that can just keep you active Mm, indeed indeed um, so we, we touched briefly on, on conventions. Uh, you have been to you've been to a couple at least. I, I do know that uh, one of the big things about conventions that's come out a lot now is cosplay. Um, we we talked briefly uh, before the show about a slight interest in cosplay. Is that is that correct? Well, yeah. I mean, I'm an actor, so I like dressing up in costumes. Yes. Um, but I don't know. I don't know where to start. I oh. don't know. Like, if you have ideas about who I should cosplay as, I would love them. I don't. So, yeah. So, don't. <laughs> chat round two. Unless Shelby, would you like to take this plug? Oh, yeah. I, I can wait. ask them first. Tell them what to do first because so, you're better at that. So, ladies and gentlemen, if you're in the chat, again, thank you for joining us here. If you have a suggestion that Riley Rose should cosplay as or tips on how to dive into the cosplay community, dive into the cosplay and uh, I don't want to say industry. Cosplay community is a better term. So if uh, any tips about cosplay that you can give to our honored guest here, we'd greatly appreciate it. Again, we'll read it out in the chat. Again, let us know if you're in the chat. I do see Winston Holmes Sop. Home supply is in the chat as well as a Daniel Seha. Everybody in here talking about what's a VHS tape. <laughs> what? what? You're you're Come joking on. with us. You're doing that are there, thing. Are there like four year olds in your chat? Yeah, I don't oh like, no, it I is, don't believe uh, it. It is a. Uh, we're we're being joked on. No, no, no. It, it was it was <laughs> my for... my my good friend Jaha who is like a million years older than me and uh, still looks like he's my age, but uh, that's fine. No, he's just like, he's facetious as usual. But that's, <laughs> that's quite okay. Also, I do see Jesse Meza in the chat. Already one suggestion, Winston says Zelda. 
from The Legend of Zelda. Okay, I know who that is. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> so we could definitely see her doing that, getting a lot of likes for that one as well. So again, folks. Yeah, you'd actually make a very good Zelda. I, I do see this, yes. So Zelda, the first one. Uh, and again, other suggestions are welcome. Also tips on it, what to do, where to go. Suggestions on places to look for supplies or ideas would be great as well. So you actually Ooh. gave some really, really good, really good advice five minutes ago, and that's do things creatively that are within your control. Mm. A lot of cosplays I see are getting depressed because they want to be picked for things or they want to be picked for group cosplays or picked for a certain mm. photo shoot or get some kind of like follower account on Instagram. But I think mm. the best thing about cosplay and the most fun way to start is just do it specifically for yourself. You don't even have to wear it to a convention, but just kind of figure out what you have the most fun doing. Yeah. There's a bunch of different elements like makeup, wigs, sewing, and like crafting and painting. What do you think you'd like the most? Well, I already own a lot of costumes and wigs because nice. I do sketch comedy. Yeah. Um, thankfully, Daniel, Daniel, I love you, uh, has a basement that we nice. just filled with costumes so that that I feel like I'm already pretty good with like costuming and wigs or like where to find that stuff mm. or how to sort of like craft cool. yeah the nice thing about sketch comedy is like the whole point is that it's like not super polished you yeah. throw it together yeah, you just yeah. do it you like we usually will like set up a show date and like write the show a couple days before and okay. like rehearse it once and then like put the show up mm. um, and I love that about it that it's like you just improvise with whatever you've got mm. on hand so yeah. that part of it I feel like I'm cool with it's right. like I don't know. I definitely have this sort of like fear of being like, what am I even allowed to cosplay as? Like, I like I don't know. I think maybe also because there are so many more people are so much more knowledgeable than I am about this stuff that I'm like, they're going to ask me a lot of questions about it. And I'm not going to be able to answer it. And then they're going to be like, you're a fraud. It's impossible. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you know? Yeah. That's imposter syndrome. It kind of sucks in the cosplay community. I know one time I was a uh, black canary and some guy was like, oh, what does she do? And I'm like, Ugh. first of all. And then he was like, no, I just didn't know what she did. I was asking. Was like, oh, 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 wow. Oh, so no. he wasn't, he wasn't trying to work. check you. I did the no. same exact thing in reaction to just like your story about it. I was like listen dude <laughs> oh you're just asking okay that's fine uh, we're okay and I was like I'm sorry that was the right so thank you for asking me um no but yeah. women get that so but often they, 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 I have like, gotten online more yeah so, mm. yeah I mean like the, the whole nerd checking thing like, it happens to be fair though I feel like that shouldn't be a worry. We got, we do have a lot of cosplayers in our chat right now. Mm -hmm. And one of the things they'll, they'll all tell you, myself included as a cosplayer, and of course Shelby did mention this ago, uh, cosplay what you like. Like, first of all, like even if you feel So, like, Appa and Momo. Yes! It's, that's going to be <laughs> it, you guys. Oh I'm, that's it. You, you can actually do that because people do humanized versions of animals, if that makes sense. That does make sense. Yeah. Or but, like, you, not, not... There's different ways people do yeah. humanized versions of animals. You can do the very literal fursuit route, which mm. I have friends that do, and they do a very good job. They spend a lot of money for good quality end product but right. you can also just do like an outfit that resembles mm -hmm. them mm -hmm. and like get a nice wig the same color as the fur and like a cute Influenced outfit by. Yeah. yeah as if they were a person I, I feel like you know that scene in Mean Girls when she shows up at the party and she's dressed as Frankenstein's <laughs> bride so that I feel like that would be like I'd like arrive at a convention as like Appa. And then there would be all the other cosplay girls who are like very sexy and like very, like that's that's how I see this happening. Mm. I'm a Bulma. Yeah. 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 I mean, I've done both. I've yeah. been both girls, so I'm not like throwing any shade. Um, but yeah, there there is like, uh, there's both ways to do it. Because that's, that's the third way to do it. You can do a full fursuit oppa you can do a casual oppa like a fashion oppa or you can do like uh i love that we've even come to the point where we're saying fashion oppa very happy about uh, this whole very experience chic. very chic yes but there's also the option of doing like the the um i don't i don't want to say i don't want to say lewd but i am gonna say lewd because i just said that like You're a thinking, like, the, like bunny, a, the bunny suit or like a bunny suit oppa yeah, yeah like oh bunny suit mm, oppa okay. like sexy oppa summer bikini yeah. oppa goes to the beach oppa whatever summer like bikini see and then the in my gambit. head it's literally oppa in a bikini I, yeah. I, think I, I think i just go the comedy route a little bit like instinctually like what's the most ridiculous <laughs> Why not? Of this? i think that's a great idea i think bikini oppa might be my first concept. oh my gosh you heard it here first on relentless weaves ladies and gentlemen i really hope that's true okay Hunter Expo, please. <laughs> okay so uh daniel says trish from devil may cry would be a good cosplay for you as well wait i think i might know who that is because they were there were cosplayers at the anime awards mm -hmm. 
for Devil May Cry. Okay. And I feel like I know. It wasn't the white bodysuit. I can't. Uh, you're thinking, well, yeah, Trish was the one. She usually wears all black, something like a halter top, long blonde hair. Uh, that's that's the character. Mm -hmm. Okay. So I that... see it. I see it. Okay. <laughs> right now, right now, Riley is looking up the character to make sure it's the okay. She's right this... here. Yeah. Uh, much approved. By the way, Winston saying my first cosplay uh, it was Link from The Legend of Zelda back at WonderCon 2016. And just to prepare himself for this, he said he just got stuff from Target, like a wig. He had shoes that were the right color, just not boots. And then, you know, last thing was just making the shield. Took four months for him to finish, but it Ooh. was as simple as that. You know. That's commitment. It was commitment, yeah. So It's as simple as four months to make a shield. <laughs> Yeah, I mean, I've seen, I've seen, I've seen much worse. Oh, much worse. I'm sure. Yeah. I when I was growing up, so my dad was in the movie business. Um, uh -huh. We, I was actually born in L.A. and we moved to Maine when I was like one year old. So okay. I don't super remember it. Right. Um, but my dad was used to work in movies when we lived out here, mm. and he made me a Halloween costume one year that took until the following Halloween to complete. <laughs> Whoa. But he was in like he was a prop maker for a okay. while and yeah, stuff. Yeah, so yeah. like he you know, he got into it and I think he wanted an outlet for like that sort of creativity mm. that he used to do professionally and now we lived in Maine and he was, you know, not even remotely close to the movie mm. industry. But um, at one point, the oh man, the island that I lived on was plagued with these this like certain type of caterpillar called a brown tail moth. And the caterpillars, the moths were fine, but the caterpillars were covered in little hairs. And oh. when their hairs fell off and like blew oh. through the wind, it would give, it would make everybody super itchy. Oh God! So it was a nightmare. Yeah. And so I was like, oh, I want to be a, a brown tail moth caterpillar for Halloween because they're <laughs> scary, they're terrifying. And and it was like, I think it was like fourth grade Halloween, and I didn't actually get that costume till fifth grade. But it was he like carved things out of foam. He used. Do you remember battle beetles? The, there was like a, a toy that was like beetles, but they would like fight each Kinda, other. Yeah. yeah, yeah. So he used that as like the mandibles of like the mouth. Oh, wow. So okay. maybe it's in my blood is what I'm saying. <laughs> yeah. Maybe that the commitment to the costume is, gotcha. is within me. Yeah. Um, I think like, especially like, is that something that would interest you if that makes sense? Like, yeah. Like you want to cosplay? Yeah. Because that's a definite thing is like, you can definitely like make... Sorry, I don't know why I can't think of th I can, the word was things. You can make things, <laughs> and um, like t making a shield can take four months. And right. I've, I've made armor before. You actually get foam and you get a heat gun and you just melt it enough to make it look like armor. Yeah. And then so you could you could very well like like the Zelda universe is what's keeps on popping up. I think you mm -hmm. do well there. Sweet. Um, the Zelda universe. Do you have any other things that you like? Even cosplaying non anime. Do you have any things that you would think about or any series if that makes sense? Hmm. Oh man, I'm trying to think of their uh, like the series that I'm probably the most. I don't. I would never cosplay as this, but I I'm I have a very long history with Friends. Um, I've seen it hundreds of times. Nice. I feel uh, so like that's probably that's. But again, like I would. It, only in the sense that I'm constantly chasing Jennifer Aniston's hair, like we all are. <laughs> the Me too. Yeah. That that to me, I'm like okay. I could dress up as just Jennifer Jennifer Innocent's hair. Um, I can't. I feel like I can't think of anything that's like good enough as a costume mm. that I would really want to go for. There's probably something. I mean, Rose from Titanic. Does oh that count? Gosh. That, 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 or is that counts, just like a yeah. Halloween costume? Is there a difference? Like, wh what's the line between just like like costume for a costume party and like cosplay? Or that's maybe there isn't. You know, there that is a good question. I'm not gonna lie. Uh, th there isn't really a line, but it depends. Like, I feel like uh, with cosplay, you can tell if something's you know. a cosplay or co or Halloween contest by seeing it out of context. I think, but all are welcome mm. at conventions if that makes sense. Okay, yeah. Like one of the things I I espouse the, uh, splitting between a Halloween costume and then a cosplay is you know, cosplay for me has also been also about embodying that character. So mm. is it you know as an actor, you know, I'll take elements of not just wearing the outfit, but actually. You know, getting into it. Like one of my favorite cosplays is the Green Arrow, uh, CW Arrow, uh, the Stephen Amell one. So I think the first time I wore it, I was using the heat because it was a ridiculously hot day to get into that angry mode where I could be like, "You failed this city." And, <laughs> you know, it really helped because mm -hmm. you know th there's that there's that element of bringing the character to life as opposed to, well, I'm at a costume party. If it's Halloween, oh, I'm a pirate, but am I really trying to be a pirate? Oh, that's mm -hmm. fair. That's a good yeah. suggestion. Gotcha, so. gotcha. By the way, uh, Luke Palmer is saying legit, if Anime Crimes Division ever wants to rumble with two kawaii for comfort, I'll make that bleep happen. 
Good job, Luke. Yes, and uh, um, Jesse Mays is now saying, I need that crossover now. So, ah, uh, that's a possibility. We'll see. Yeah. So, um, I think uh, you don't always have to, if you cosplay, you don't have to, like, kind of believe you're the character, though, if that makes sense. Like, you don't true. have to, like, role true. play. Sure. Because yeah. I was Regina George after she got hit by the bus. Oh, and it's hard to, <laughs> my like, God. That's, so good. that's amazing. That's that's my, my favorite cosplay so far that I've done. That's very, very good. Right. Because my dad also has too much, like, is home a lot. <laughs> And he was a ra- he's a race car builder. It's like so cold in Maine me. too. It's like cold. you're inside. It, there's like ten months of winter. Yeah, yeah. Mm. So I think funny stuff like that are like yeah. Mm-hmm. Also, you can cosplay. It's not like you have to like strictly do anything this is true. like that. So you can go that route too. Pen fifteen. Have you seen Pen fifteen yet? I have to. Highly recommended. I would cosplay as those girls any day. <laughs> nice. So good. Braces, bowl cuts, nineties mm. galore. Mm. It's Makes very, sense. Very good. All right, folks. Well, uh, again. Thank you for joining us here at uh, Relentless Weebs. Again, your one-stop shop for all topics, anime, anime community, anime themes. Again, here you learn about the Kawaii philosophy. Your host, Shelby McWeeb, Andrew J. Landy, and our guest for this evening. Give it up, Riley Rose Critchlow. Folks, uh, one more plug uh, as we continue on our show here. This one's the big one, folks. Insanime happening July 4th, hopefully, at the Belasco Theater in downtown L.A. Now, folks... Anime Impulse put on Insanime during Halloween of last year. It was a phenomenal event. There was dancing. There were video games. It was a chill place. There were photos that were happening. Again, a great group of people putting on a huge, excellent event. They're trying super to put fun. one on. Yes. It was super fun, right? We both got to go. Super fun. Everything for everybody. Exactly. So, folks, if you can, check out kickstarter.com and search Insanime on there. There is a Kickstarter up to help fund the event. Please, folks, if you can... Donate to it. If you can't, even just a share would help as well. Let's get this awesome event going on. Again, July 4th, that's the aim for it. Celebrate your July 4th the proper way with fireworks to begin and then party the night away at Insanime. So, again, kickstarter.com, search Insanime. So, folks, we're going to continue on, folks. We're not done just yet. There's still a lot to go over here in a little amount of time. So we're going to keep going. Again, folks, if you have an anime suggestion, animals that are our main characters possibly preferred, maybe, but any good anime would suffice. Also, cosplay ideas for Radley Rose. That would be the way to go. I'm getting so much information today. (laughs) Right? And as we're winding down, is there any specific things you want, to, like a funny thing about um, uh, Anime Crime Division or any like funny story you can tell us about like being on there? Mm. I mean, probably the most ridiculous time on set was, uh, so in season two, and I don't want to give away any spoilers in case you haven't seen it yet, Right. but um, there's a moment when Diesel and Joe get very close to each other (laughs) uh which was filmed in the hallway of a scientology building (laughs) i'm no comment on that Uh, but uh. we we probably and if you watch the bloopers this is like half of the bloopers because we were like centimeters (laughs) away from each other's face Uh and and sung Wan also by the way is like Watching him crack up is the most delightful thing you'll ever see really? in your whole life. Okay. Because he does like he does his like stoic thing very well and he has that voice that's like very commanding, but then when he cracks up, it's like so incredible. so like I like I low key was like just trying to make him crack up nice. by like being as ridiculous as I possibly could, like two centimeters away from his face. Mm. It was very fun. And when we finally, finally like got the take and we and then they cut, like the whole crew was like die like it was just like <laughs> one of those moments where you're like, This is good. Mm. Mm. It was very, very fun. Mm. It's funny. What do you think? And this this might be a loaded question, so answer it if you, as you will. Obviously, not diving into any spoilers and hinting at nothing. What do you think the odds that we could get season three? What do you think are the odds? I really hope so. Mm. Um, I really, yeah. I, I think we're all definitely hoping for it. There are mm. so many possibilities in the story and what could happen. Uh, but yeah, if you if you also want season three, you can tweet at Crunchyroll mm. and let them know that. So, yeah. And make sure you watch the show and share the show with your friends because ultimately, mm. you know, the numbers don't lie. Yeah, that's very true. The numbers do not lie, folks. Again, like stated... If you want to see more Anime Crimes Division, go to Twitter, tweet at Crunchyroll. Again, yeah, it's tweet at Crunchyroll. Let them know you want to see season three. It's it's phenomenal. It, it was such a delight to watch. I mean, we really sat down and just could not put it down. Not, I'm so glad. Not going to lie. I also heard, like, kind of from the YouTube advert in the first season that if you bought enough shirts, then you, that would help fund the future season. I mean, seasons. it can't hurt, and they're very cool. Oh my Aren't gosh. they cool? So... I'm actually jealous. 
I, um, I don't know one. Yeah, they were for, they were for sale at Crunchyroll Expo. So look up if I don't know if you can still buy one. I'm sure you still can. Right? I think so. Yeah, it was yeah. on the Crunchyroll store. Yeah, mm-hmm. I think they're still up there. So hit up the Crunchyroll store and buy a shirt too to help prove that you like it with your money. <laughs> yes. yes, that's the... me saying this. Don't worry. <laughs> yes, this was not part of my official plug list here. That was literally just Shelby going rogue on me, um. which is quite all right because it supports a great cause. Let's be real. Mm. So, Do you um, see, like, um, with other original, like, live action stuff on Crunchyroll, like, what else do you see? Like, have you, like, thought about, like, anything else you'd like to see on there? Or, um, I don't know. I mean, I don't know of, I guess I don't know of a lot of, like, live action stuff in the anime sphere. Mm. A lot of times when I tell people about the show, they're like, oh, so, like, you're a voice actor. I'm like, no, it's actually, <laughs> like, it's about anime, and it's right. for anime fans. It's not anime. And right. then they get very confused. Um, so I don't know. I don't know. Is there is there more live action stuff in the anime world? The only thing, I, I, like, this is definitely, like, really cool and really cool. I've, there are, there's also Too Kawaii for Comfort. Mm-hmm. But so far, like, they're still, like, making more youtube series and right. like web series mm. trying to go that way so mm-hmm. i think it's really cool like what your show started if that makes sense right cool. because putting content live action content for weebs is definitely a groundbreaker so i'm like really cool it's really cool that you get to be like the like you the fourth bringer of that if that makes sense yeah and you're like the van <laughs> the vanguard you started a chain basically and... i mean i feel like i can't take credit for it but the people that actually created the show did a great <laughs> job they did they, they did, did. I mean, and it's really cool that, like, you started with the first season and then so many people liked it and your performance and everything that it created a second season. Right. Yeah, but, and I think yeah. they were doing it a little bit as a test initially mm. to be like, we have this idea. And the guys at Rocket Jump and the, and everybody we worked with at Crunchyroll as well, everyone was, like, so invested in just making it as good as we possibly could right, and right. really celebrating everybody's love of anime. And I think that really came across, even those first three episodes of season one, they were like, okay, we're going to try this, but like, we're going to try it like full out yeah, and, okay, and see. And then people, the response was incredible. Uh-huh. It was one of those things where people are like, okay, well don't read the YouTube comments. And I was like, I know not, but then we read them anyway and they were all really, really good. Yeah. So, you yeah. Know, yeah. Most, most of the reactions were really positive. And yeah. then the, that sort of led to the second season. So, I mean, the fact that it's, it's all sort of come out of initially from like the love of anime from rocket jump and crunchy roll wanting mm. to create it together. And yeah. then like fueled by the love of the fans loving the show and wanting to see more of that universe. It's, been it's been a true delight to be a part of mm. you definitely have one of the nicest youtube comment sections of any show i've ever seen it, it really is yeah. yeah everyone's like super happy and supportive yeah. it's rare for youtube i feel like <laughs> yeah it's the internet it's not yeah. a nice place and we have nice comments yeah who does that so right? like good on you for that <laughs> By the way, give you a quick shout out. Johan Ochoa and Timberland Envy are in here as well. Uh, let's see. Winston is saying Cowboy Bebop and the, of course, the purported live action that is. Oh right, maybe going I forgot to about that. Right. right. Any thoughts? Any thoughts on that? I know you have a, a bit of experience. You got to watch a little bit of Cowboy Bebop. I have watched some of it. Mm. Um, if you, I don't want to. No spoilers. But there is a spoiler in season two of Anime Crimes Division that I it was spoiled for me. So Ooh, um, wow. it's hard. The, the hard thing about Anime Crimes Division is that it hits so many different shows right. that yeah. like something's bound to be spoiled for somebody. But you know right. that's the world. Yeah. Um, I don't know. The only live action thing I've seen is is the Last Airbender movie, which we don't. T- t- it's you guys. Yeah. Mm. I don't. Oof. And like the Dragon Ball that got referenced in Oh yeah, the two season two is that. I, I forgot until I watched that the Dragon Ball Z like the Did English all. remake existed oh my God. like what uh, so I don't know not to say that it can't be done but it's right. it's it's hard because if you've seen any of the ones that didn't work out so well mm-hmm. they like they didn't even get their names right like I, it was so con- I was like who's Soka that's not a character that I'm familiar with right what like um, so I don't know. I'm ho- I think everyone's really hoping that it's going to go well. Mm. That and your name. Your name. Oh, that's right. Yes. Are they doing a live action of that? Yeah. <gasps> that movie is incredible. Mm. Yeah. No, I'm not disagreeing with you. Yeah. Um, but it, uh, like, so I am waiting to have an opinion because J.J. Abrams is directing it, and I know that. Um, I know that um, the English remake that the the original Japanese creators said we don't want it to be like a Japanese remake because we could do that ourselves we could make our own Japanese remake right. we want it to be an English remake set in America which mm. is all which is a little bit of like a risky place for anybody 
I don't know. So it's going to be yeah. an original story. I guess if like Inspired, that's yeah. the intent and not just like American people being like, everyone's white. That's cool, right? <laughs> like Jeez. as long as like that going into it, that's right. like the, I don't know. It still feels problematic, but yeah. it's not my thing. Yeah. Um, so I really have no say in it. Yeah. But I really loved that movie. So right. I would be happy to see more of the story. I hope that it'll be good and still faithful to the original idea behind it because right. the original movie was really good. Yeah. Also, Ghost in the Shell happened and yeah. I forgot that too i did not see that no mm. um so just to know i never yeah. yeah i mean i don't i didn't see it like, watch like scarlett johansson's watching the chat like but no um. scarlett i'm so sorry we'll, we'll talk later yeah i mean we're getting a lot of we don't talk about some some yeah. of these movies here they never existed it's fair. let's let's be real yeah i didn't finish last year bender did anybody i was just like <laughs> we're done here no, no. I mean, I never yeah airbender saw. was like uh. i haven't it wasn't that like the end of it felt like an end of an end of the era if that makes sense like people oh just kind of right? stopped for a while after that for at least 10 years of trying to do remakes yeah. right try to dive in capitalize on hey what's the next thing we can adapt and not anymore i Ooh. think oh wait aren't they doing a live action series of airbender i heard yes. that once I, I, <laughs> I, I, I don't know. I believe I believe that is in the works right now. My, so, yeah. I think my boyfriend, when I was watching it, he was like, first of all, why are you watching this?" I was like, "I was curious, but it, you're right. It's as bad as I thought it was." Uh-huh. Um, and then he was like, they, "I think they're doing a live action series to kind of make up for right the missteps, yeah. which is I think totally fair to yeah. like try something and be like." Okay, that was not exactly what we wanted it to be, but we'll try it again. We're gonna we're sorry. Go, yeah, we're, we're going to go. It, it was like Daredevil. I mean, they had the movie, and then they went with the series on Netflix, and we, we saw how that turned out. The movie was questionable, and I mean, it's a less extreme example, but uh, we're not going to go there. So there's possibility. That's all we're exactly. saying. It's, the, the, the possibility is there. It's getting better. Indeed. People said- give Appa a not a scary face this time, please. That's all I ask. Oh, my God. They gave him such a scary face. Ugh. They also gave him like human eyes, like he has bison eyes, and they're weird, and they're on the sides, and he's got those weird sideways pupils, and they're beautiful. Mm. And in the then in the live action, he's like he's a scary face. Mm. It's scary. I don't like it. Oh my gosh, I'm a little worried now. I'm kind of glad I didn't see. Who it. directed that? And then did he, he have to stop for? It, it was wasn't who directed the village? It, it was, was M Night Shyamalan. Shyamalan. Yeah, M Night Shyamalan yeah. directed Shyamalan that. Directed that. that yes. Okay, it all makes sense, <laughs> right? Everything's like clear now. Okay, so, uh, folks, we're winding down towards the end of the show. Uh, again, do want to give everybody a huge thank you it's for ju- uh, for tuning in tonight. Again, we air every every Tuesday night at 7.30 p.m. If you want to give Riley Rose, again, a huge thank you to you as well. Thank you for having me. Uh, let's see. To recap, just by the way, uh, some of the anime that were suggested. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. That way we catch them. Of course, uh, continue on with Sailor Moon. Mm-hmm. Every season of Precure has the two animal-esque mascots. Excellent. Let's see. Fairy Tales Happy. Camino Friends was one of them. As Camino well. Friends is a good one. Mm-hmm. And of course, the polar bear who owns a cafe, Shiro Kuma Cafe. Yes. Just to, And uh, one other suggestion that didn't get in here uh, earlier, but we got it now, Hamtaro is also another one. That's a throwback. That's good. Very good throwback. So, Excellent. And then, of course, cosplay suggestions ranged from Zelda, from The Legend of Zelda, not Link, of course. Not the green hat. No, the one in the dress. You could do either, honestly. Yeah, I think could. you'd do Let's well. <laughs> and then, of course, uh, Trish from Devil May Cry was another mm-hmm. suggestion. So mm-hmm. just recapping a couple of the things suggested. And Op in a bikini. And yeah. Op in no, a bikini. That's what I'm hoping yes. for. The most important one. <laughs> Boom. There we go. Okay. If you have, have any other sug- oh, sorry. If you have any other suggestions oh. for anime or cosplay, tweet at her. Mess- no, don't message her. Tweet at her. <laughs> comment here. Everything. Keep going. Mm. Like... The stream doesn't end when we end. You can keep commenting and talking. Right. Um. So, but uh, just to just to follow up on that, um, rather was where should what should the people be following and where do they follow you? Okay, so you can follow me on Twitter at Riley Rose Critch. You can follow me on Instagram at Riley Ace of Spies. Um, you can follow my podcast. It's called Hags. We are at Hags Podcast across all platforms. Mm. And Mary Kate Nashtray is on YouTube. Yeah, we're on YouTube. Mary Kate and Astra, <laughs> that is the wittiest title. I love that. Thank you. Nice, nice. <laughs> and do you have any other projects coming up that you want to talk about? Or? Mm-hmm. Yeah, um, I did. A, I shot a sci-fi short recently. I actually don't have any release details, but if you follow my social media at some point, I will let you know how to check that out. And then we will be releasing a new Mary Kate and Ashtray sketch at some point in the next month or so. so nice. You can check that out too. 
Why not? Cool. Uh, what about you? You can say stuff. I know. I, I usually go last. I'm going to go second. My name is Andrew J. Landy. You can follow me at Andrew J. Landy. It's right below me, as you can see. That's Instagram and Twitter for all uses. You can tweet at me for uh, just about anything fighting game related or anime content as well. And the Instagram is nothing but bad gym selfies and nothing but food. Shelby. You can, first of all, I want to say that you should follow Anime Impulse on every social media platform yes. because I do, and I think everything I do is great. Um, <laughs> but you can also follow me on Shelby McWeave on Twitter, where I talk a lot, Instagram, where I post a lot of pictures, mostly of cosplay, um, and then uh, Facebook, Bombshell Media, which is where you're watching this off of right now. Mm -hmm. Indeed, folks. All right, well, that about does it for this edition of Relentless Sweeps. Again, folks. You heard where to follow, so do those things. Click the likes, click the follows. Make sure you're getting those notifications for when we go live at 7.30 every Tuesday night to talk anime because this is your one-stop shop to learn about the kawaii philosophy. And that about wraps it up for everybody here at Relentless Weebs. So to all, from uh, all of us to all of you, thank you so much, and we'll see you next time. Take care and have a wonderful week.